booktube my name is chelsea i'm the reading outlaw and we're here today to do a what i'm reading wednesday i usually do top five wednesdays but as is always the case when i can't actually think of anything for the topic i'm just going to tell you guys what it is i'm reading today jumping right into the pile if you guys saw my video on monday then you'll know that i'm still working my way through dune by frank herbert this is a part of paul from common touch of fantasies dune in june read along which i will link to down below of course I'm enjoying it. It's not the best book I'm reading at the moment, but I don't dislike it. Definitely gives us uh, quite a few things to talk about and definitely has some interesting food for thought. It's a good blend of science fiction as well as a book on religion, a book on ecology, a book on, you know, political theory, <laughs> mother-son relations. There's just a lot going on beyond just the science fiction. It's enjoyable. When I put it down, I have a little bit of a hard time picking it back up, but I am working my way through it at a pretty decent pace and will definitely be done with it by the end of the month. Next up on the list is an ebook. I am group reading The Gardens of the Moon by Stephen Erickson, which is the first in the Malazan Book of the Fallen series, which is unbeknownst to me until recently, a pretty big foundational, uh, like science, well, not science fiction, fantasy, kind of like high fantasy series. There's a lot going on. Steven Erickson literally just kind of dropped to in the middle of everything that's happening. There's a pretty steep learning curve, but luckily I'm group reading it with, um, Michael from Bitten by a Radioactive Book and Caitlin from Kitty G and they've both read it before. I'm also, uh, also reading it with Sam from Connor O'Brien or... <laughs> Connor from Connor O'Brien and Sam from Novels and Nonsense. Can you tell that it's early? Um, <clears throat> they're also reading it with us, but they're new readers like I am. And so having Michael and Caitlin there as people who've read it before has been really helpful kind of understanding what's going on. It's a book that, about mages and there's like a tarot card kind of thing involved and fate and the gods. It all feels very Greek. It's a, you know, tense book long series. So eventually I imagine I will continue to read my way through the rest of them. I'm a little bit more than halfway done with that, almost three quarters of the way done with that. And that is what I am reading on ebook. Uh, in my ears at the moment, I just finished up The Wrath and the Dawn by Renee Adia, which was absolutely amazing. Five star read, absolute five star read. Uh, one of my absolute favorite list on Goodreads. It was narrated beautifully. The plot was amazing. I'm so excited for the next one because it's the first one in, I believe, at least a trilogy. Um, yeah, because it's more than a duology, so I'm pretty sure it's at least a trilogy. And it's based on A Thousand and One Nights. It's the story of Scheherazade, who, after her friend is, you know, murdered by the king in a series of, of bridal murders by the king, she volunteers to be next to find out why... This king is marrying girls and then kills them. She survives the night by telling him stories, but then she starts to fall in love with him and it's just all about navigating that. The female friendships in this book were absolutely amazing. The whole reason that uh, Scheherazade does what she does is to, uh, to honor the life of her best friend. She makes really good friends with her handmaiden. It's just, it's amazing. And of course, there's lots of romance. The writing itself was absolutely beautiful. Um, it was very, very cl a close reading experience to me to reading the actual Thousand and One Nights in terms of some of the poetry of the language. Uh, that's one of my favorite fairy tale books. So I absolutely just adored it. And now that I'm done with that, I am continuing on with Blood Song with, by Anthony Ryan, which, which is all in anticipation of reading the second book, Tower Lord, here coming up on the 29th. I'm hoping to be a part of that group read, and yeah, that's a reread for me, but I'm listening to it on audiobook because I just have other stuff going on in print. <laughs> and next, speaking of stuff going on in print, the nonfiction I'm reading at the moment is actually one that I'm just getting ready to start, so I can't tell you how it is yet, but it's called Come As You Are, The Surprising New Science That Will Transform Your Sex Life by Emily Nagoski, PhD. Look at that scandalous cover. Ooh, it looks like a sorry kids <laughs> this is a grown-up channel we're talking about adult books today <laughs> but yes this is basically just uh let's see see like I literally just picked this up from the holds list yesterday so I don't even know what it's about I think I heard from it it came as a part of Liberty Hardy's um new books email from the book riot community I think that's where I heard of it maybe on the podcast I'm not entirely sure 
but it's basically just an update of all the sexual research um, concerning, you know, uh, foreplay, female orgasms, all of these mysterious things. The ones they highlight on the back are turning on the ons and turning off the offs, uh, inter your brain interpreting responses, sexual responses as a series of gas and pedals, taking control of the context and responsive desire. So just, you know, really letting us know what's going on with the whole sex parts on the biology and the science. Yeah, I really like pop science books, especially when they concern sexuality, especially which I'm assuming this one does based on the cover from a more like female bent. Uh, I really liked both The Purity Myth and Breasts, <laughs> which are books that I will link to the Goodread pages down below too because I don't remember the authors. But yes, I just picked this up. As you can see, it was a June new release at my library. That's what that means. So yeah, I'm really excited. It's been like a hot second since I've had like a pop science book to read. So yeah, I'm really excited to get to that. And lastly, because you know I can't do one of these videos without some kind of graphic novel, I am very, very sadly onto volume seven of Chew, finally. Um, I'm really spacing these last ones out because my library only has three volume eight, which means after this one, I'm all done. And I can read these in like one sitting if I let myself, like a solid like 45 minutes to an hour sitting and I can be done with this, like one of these. So that makes me sad because Chew is so far like definitely in my top graphic novel series like of all time. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, when I do wrap it up, I'm going to do like an overarching review video that will basically just be me like shooting love at the camera for however long it takes me to talk about them. But yes, this is the graphic novel I'm getting ready to read. We are still on the adventure, adventures of sympathetic detective Tony Chu. Now his old partner Mason Savoy is in the picture. I just am really enjoying learning more and more about Tony Chu's family, his sister and his daughter, both of whom have their own kind of eating related powers. I am enjoying the expansion of this universe where people have a variety of powers related to food and eating. And yeah, it's funny. It's gross. One of my favorite things about these novels is that if you look at the background uh, pictures and notice some of the attention to detail there, it's absolutely like it just makes the novel for graphic novels for me. I'll point some of those out uh, when we when I do like the big overarching review video. But yeah, look at the backgrounds, read the tiny notes, look at the bulletin boards and stuff, read the headlines on the newspapers and the panels. They're absolutely hilarious. And they'll put like a whole nother layer of meaning on the novel. That is what I am reading, you guys. That's what's going on this Wednesday. As you know, I like to have a little bit going on in every reading format because I am a glutton for words. Let me know down below what you're reading. If you did a top five Wednesday, feel free to link it down below and please let me know. I will see you guys again on Friday. And as always, like, comment, subscribe, and check me out on the internet. All right. Bye, guys.